Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the You Like That podcast, episode 102. This week, we're going to be looking at Scream, aka Scream 5. Uh, we're going to jump into some news where we start these off all the time. Uh, finish off with your questions at the end of the episode. If you're new around here, make sure you do like and subscribe and rate us on uh, on Spotify, iTunes, wherever you get your podcasts. Just one click, easy done, helps me out. And it gets you involved, you know? We like to see that there. Alrighty, so jumping into the news for the week. This week, starting us off, Jason Momoa has joined the Fast 10 club. The new casting is going to include Aquaman himself. Now, that makes a lot of sense. It's Jason Momoa. He's an action guy. And Fast and Furious just will put anyone in their movies these days. So why not? Uh, We allegedly believe... uh, Early rumors were that it's for a villainous role but the script isn't done yet. It's subject to change. He could be good guy. He could be bad guy. He would work in either way. He's played badass dudes before, but he's also a very funny, you know, like happy-go-lucky guy. So he could be like a really good sidekick for Vin Diesel and the crew. But I can also see him being the big bad of the movie and just taking, you know, a gritty backseat and really having some fun with these fast movies. Because let's be honest, they're shit, but they're fun. So Jason Momoa and Fast 10 confirmed coming out with guardians of the galaxy 3 james gunn has confirmed this is going to be the last time we see the full team together now whether this means someone's dying or multiples are dying we don't know what we're going to get yet but the confirmation reassures us that we're going to get something really big in this movie so it's going to have an 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 ultimate you know uh end game quote unquote yeah um to, to the Guardians of the Galaxy that we know. Obviously, there was early news about Dave Bautista not wanting to return to the role of Drax after Guardians 3 um, due to some creative issues and not wanting to keep betraying the character. Uh, it's, it's all to their own. So whether they kill Drax off, maybe. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. They just, you know, send him off into another portal somewhere. Maybe, maybe that's what happens. But Guardians 3 will be the last time you see all of those members together as the Guardians of the Galaxy. Quick one before, Jackass 4 releases next week. Johnny Knoxville has already come out to confirm that Jackass 4.5 is coming, and it is full of deleted scenes and extra outtakes and just all those those skits that don't make it to the main movie, which, let's be honest, sometimes the .5 movies are just a little bit better sometimes. I'm sure some people can back me up on that one there. So Jackass 4.5 is going to be on its way soon. Ron Perlman. You know that guy. He was Hellboy. Well, he's coming out now to say, well, more or less he was asked, should Hellboy 3 happen and will you return to it? To which he said, fuck no, I'm 71 years old. But I think we owe it to the fans to finish that trilogy. So he's basically outing uh, Guillermo del Toro to get back out there, get a third one done. Whether that includes Ron Perlman, I mean, he's 71, but he's not in the worst shape of his life. And with CG in that, I'm sure they can, you know, throw in some action stuff without needing it. But it could be a bit heavy having to put on all that makeup and shit all over again. Because, you know, that's a lot to don on. The Hellboy makeup was a big commitment for him. So, um, yeah, we may potentially get a third Hellboy. Because, let's be honest, we all want to forget about David Harbour's remake version of Hellboy. Because that was a fucking total mess, wasn't it? But yeah, Hellboy 3 possibly in the works. The Rock just can't stay away from anything. The Rock recently has come out to state that he is making a video game movie of one of the biggest video games that there is. And his statement reads as follows. We're going to be we're going to be bringing one of the biggest, most badass games to the screen. One that I've played for years. I'm really excited to bring it to fans around the world. Of course, we're going to do it right by our gamer friends, but really... We're just going to make a great movie. What could this possibly be? This big brute of a man who, you know, let's be honest, doesn't have a big acting range, let's say. Um, very very obviously, this could be Call of Duty. Uh, I, it wouldn't surprise me. It'd be a very easy video game movie to make. Uh, I don't think he's going to bring out a Candy Crush movie, let's be honest. And... 
for one, I didn't know The Rock had time to play games. The dude owns 34 companies, brings out seven movies a year, and can now just decide he has time to play video games. Um, could be Apex Legends. That'd be nice. Uh, but who knows what this could be. Obviously, The Rock has been in video game movies before. Doom. Rampage. I like Rampage. Rampage was good. But Doom, Doom's another story. So whether he follows the same footsteps and the same formula in creating a very bad video game movie for a very good video game, we'll find out eventually. And our last piece of news for the week, my favorite that came out, Mortal Kombat 2 officially has been greenlit and it is on its way. Uh, Todd Garner came out to confirm all the news along with all the other actors sharing upon social media the news uh, and, and their absolute excitement knowing that the second one is on its way. Uh, we also got the confirmation that, um, what was his name? Jeremy Slater, writer of the upcoming Moon Knight series, has been uh, put on to write the script for Mortal Kombat 2. So depending how Moon Knight goes, obviously we haven't seen anything of Moon Knight yet, so... Uh, yeah, you know, we'll see what happens with Moon Knight and then maybe that can gauge our interest for Mortal Kombat 2. But with everyone sharing their, their love for the, for, the, for, the, for the movie being announced to come back, a lot of the actors who, if you haven't seen the first one, that do die in the film, uh, begs the question that will we see their dead forms under the, under the, um, uh, the control of Shang Tsung, uh, you know, with Kung Lao, with Kano, to uh, Goro... All that, because we know in the games that they do have a dead counterpart that Shang Tsung controls, which was always alluded to that that will happen, and it would be cool if we get to see that as well. Among whatever new characters that we get in this movie, because the Mortal Kombat roster is incredibly stacked, and people are upset with different characters that they didn't introduce in the first one, but you got to remember, you put too much in that movie, you're going to fuck yourself up. You put yourself up for failure. So, give this movie time to do its thing, bring in those new characters, it will be sweet. So I cannot wait for Mortal Kombat 2. Alrighty, and that's all the news for the week. Thanks for joining me on that one there, guys. Now let's jump into the main review of the week. Alrighty, our main review for the week. This week we are looking at Scream, also known as Scream 5, the fifth entry into the Scream franchise, created by Wes Craven, rest his soul, the absolute horror whiz that he was. Um, and we've got our newest entry into the film, uh, into the franchise, sorry. It is a film, yes. Uh, so, Scream. Scream 5, released 2022, directed by Matt bettinelli Olpen and Tyler Gillette. Uh, these are co-directors. They both directed together VHS, Devil's Due, and Ready or Not. Uh, this is at a runtime of 114 minutes. A good runtime for a slasher flick. flick. Uh, budget of $24 million. I've got to praise him for the budget. Smaller budget, they used it well. Uh, box office has raked in a total of 90 million um, at the time of recording. Rotten Tomatoes score. This is this is the interesting one. Fifth film in a horror franchise. It started to drop itself off. Coming back to this, bringing back legacy characters. Uh, it was always set up that it could fail. No, 78% with the critics and 82% with the audience. I mean, that kind of speaks for itself. It's not amazing, but hey, we know that the critics don't dish out a good rating like this for horror, for not a lot of horror. It's very rare you'll get one. So for them to give that to this, it's got a, kind of got to sway you a little bit to that one side. Um, we've got the casting. We've, we've got uh, Melissa Barrera, Kyle Garner, Mason Gooding, Mikey Madison, Dylan Minet, Jenna Ortega, Jack Quaid, Marley Shelton, Roger L. Jackson as the voice of Ghostface returning again. <clears throat> and we've also got our returning legacy characters. We do see a digitally DH Skeet Ulrich, uh, Courtney Cox, David Arquette, and Neve Campbell all return in their respective roles. So, Scream 5. What's my relationship with Scream? Scream is a franchise, a collection of horror movies that I had never seen before. I have still... I've only seen the first Scream movie, which was very recently. And I enjoyed that first Scream movie. Um... I like slasher films very much. And if they're done pretty well, pretty right, that's a decent movie for me. And I thought I thought the, the first Scream was a decent movie. Um, it had enough going on for it. It wasn't a very 
thick, convoluted plot that didn't make any sense. Uh, but it, it got to where it needed to be. Uh, two, three, and four, haven't seen. I've looked up the YouTube videos to see the timeline of what happens, where have you, which... I'm going to be honest, it seems like every movie in this franchise is just a repeat of the one before it. Uh, there doesn't seem like there's progression in these series. And after watching this new one and comparing it to the other ones, yeah, I can kind of see that this is just a... Let's keep doing the same thing over and over again. And I think people just were eventually getting bored of it. Um, so I had no further relationship with anything else, but I thought, fuck it. I've seen the first, I'll see the fifth, and just see what I reckon. I like the first one. Do I like the fifth entry into this franchise? And I did. I, I, I pleasantly enjoyed this movie. Uh, this movie had enough of everything to keep me keep me entertained, to keep me wanting to see this movie progress. Um, it did a lot in itself where it played itself really well in its own story. It brought back its legacy characters, but only in the points where they needed to come back. They weren't in, as much integral to the story um, to sort of drive the plot, which is really good because you, you don't want to bring back those legacy characters and make the focus on them, especially when it's 25 years odd later since the first and you're sort of relying on them because, say, they killed it in the first one, so we need them to get this one off the ground. And I like that that's not what they did with it. Uh, David Arquette, he was given enough to do in this. He didn't get a lot of screen time. But the screen time they gave him was utilized perfectly. Courtney Cox and Neve Campbell, they did what they had to do by the end of it. They were given glimpses in between the film, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, and then ultimately had their ending that needed to be there, but they weren't integral to the first half of the story. They really needed to have them there in that scenario. Uh, so the use of, uh, of everything, they... They did their kill scenes brilliantly. It's a it, brilliant slasher kills. Uh, it's so cheesy, so like, because it's all just, you know, chase, chase, stab, stab is all their ones are. And they do it really well. And they, it, it's very, very different and very hard these days to think of a horror film that requires no jump scares to be effective. Uh, and all you've got is some, some teenagers, some young adults, uh, running around in a ghost face costume, inciting fear and really, you know, brutally murdering people. And it's not fearful in, in that sense of, 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 of frightfulness. It's just the, the knowledge of being like, well, fuck, they just would just go and brutally murder anyone because fucking a movie said to do so. Um, but their, their, their kills are utilized very perfectly. I absolutely love how they did it all. That's what I'm saying. Claiming on the budget, the $24 million budget, they utilize it so perfectly because the movie looks really good. It's a really good looking movie. When they do their kills, they look great. A lot of it's practical. You've got practical blood. Um, and oh, uh, and then the runtime is short enough to not be so uh, fatty of all this random shit. Um, so uh, the... So I like the movie. The comparison to this to the others is very similar. Again, this this one focuses on, you know, Stab Stab 8 came out, which is, you know, the if you know about the Scream franchise, you know, within the movie, they're creating a movie upon those events in the movie. It's so confusing to say. In the second Scream movie, they, they make the movie Stab, which is to... Uh, go on the events that happened in the first screen movie. So you've got a movie happening in a movie in this movie. <laughs> so this one is, is this is where I found it was trying to do like, I feel like they were doing what the matrix did with resurrections. And they were like, Oh, the, the, the company came out and made stab eight. But they changed everything. It was terrible. Fans boycotted all this shit. And then they were doing their internal, their internal pieces of being like, Oh yeah, because Hollywood just wants to keep doing sequels and you know bringing back legacy characters, and just talking the way that they did sort of in the Matrix, where it's just like Hollywood just keep wanting to bust these out, but in this was a bit more of a serious like now that's sort of integral to the overall plot behind everything of this of the Stab franchise in the movie, so they had that playing along cool whatever I get it haha funny jokes 
it is what it is. Uh, a couple little wisecrack jokes on Ryan Johnson for Star Wars The Last Jedi. It's pretty funny, but don't hate the man. Hate the game. Disney. Uh, so, yeah. The, 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 the comparisons are exactly all the same. Two killers trying to take down, eventually by the end of it, Sydney, Gale, Dewey. Uh, it all comes full circle. This one sort of focuses more on Billy Loomis's kid, um, Sam Carpenter, who's the main girl in this one here. Uh, she is the daughter of Billy Loomis, which is the big sort of reveal, like, oh, I you know, had a random kid, and then uh, whatever else have you to try and you know make the story a bit more emotional and a bit more twisty. But uh, it's a slasher movie, you don't really give a shit about that stuff really at the end of the day, do you? Um, uh, so yeah, the the returning of the legacy characters again. They did them really well. They didn't overdo it. They served their purposes. Uh, quick spoiler: three, two, one. David Arquette's character Dewey Riley does die in this one. Finally, kind of sacrifices himself in a way, but he he goes out in a heroic ending, which is really really nice to see him do. Um, and Courtney Cox does not do much. And and Neve Campbell, yeah, she ultimately wins it by the end of it, I guess, by helping. Um, but overall, the movie is is decent. Um, they threw in some really good references to modern day horror movies as well, because obviously, since the start, you've got the movie guy in there and he's talking about the old horrors and that. Same thing now. You're in the newer age. The girl's talking about the Bubba Duke and that. And that's her favorite movie because it's elevated horror. You know, it's horror with uh, with an artistic background and that, you know, it doesn't need to always be straight scary. You can have some, like, hidden emotion and metaphors behind it. And obviously The Babadook, part of the Australian movie, incredible movie. I highly suggest you go watch that movie as well. Uh, so really cool to see those uh, references being made in these movies. You don't see it a lot and it's good that they acknowledge the universe around them in it as well. Uh, but Scream 5, ultimately it's a really good movie. Um, I don't know if I, if I'll go back and watch the ones in between. Uh, I'm probably going to anyway because I bought the three packs, so I'll give it a sus. But Scream Five is definitely a pleasant re-entry into the franchise uh, that really steps itself above with a more easy to follow plot that's not too uh, fatty, that's not too hard to take in. There's enough to look at to make you go, yeah, that's sick. Uh, it's a low runtime which makes it easier to take in as well. And ultimately, you get a really good resolution by the end of it. And there's no there's no ruled out chances of any sequels to follow after this. Uh, Neve Campbell and the directors have expressed their interest to keep doing more. If they were to, I'd like to see them move away from doing the same thing again because that's all it's doing is regurgitating the same stuff. Eventually, they're going to they're gonna eventually re-ruin themselves and put them in the ground again, like they did with Scream 4. So, let's hope that doesn't happen. But if you are a fan of the Scream franchise, this is definitely worth checking out for you. I think you'll be pleasantly happy with how this one was done and how well it serves to the previous ones beforehand. So, that's Scream 5. It is out now in cinemas. If you want to go see that, go out. Go take a mate before we get locked down again whenever a new variant hits us. So... Uh, that's our main review for the week. Let's finish this episode off with some questions. Alrighty, guys. Question time to round out this episode. Thank you so much for everyone sending in your questions. As always, head on over to the Instagram. Links are in the bio. Just send me a DM or when I put up the post asking for questions, just send whatever you want. It doesn't bother me. You can upload, just send me anything. I will answer that question. As painfully truthful as I have to, I will answer it. So let's jump in first with Jack. Jack asks, what franchise would you love to see bring back a legacy actor? Example, Tobey Maguire in No Way Home. It would have been... Originally, it would have been um, having all all three of Goldblum, Sam Neill, and Laura Dern for Jurassic Park, which we're getting in Jurassic World Dominion anyway. Uh, knowing that those franchises were continuing, it would have been great to see them come back. And they heard me. They gave me that one there. Um, everyone else has sort of come through, like Star Wars has, has has had their ones. It's happening in the book of Boba Fett anyway. So there's not much else that I really want to see a legacy have to come back into because I don't have a lot of franchises where I can go, you know, they've changed people or it's, it's spread along too far. We can bring someone back. So 
I mean, Jurassic Park was always my one, and I'm so happy I get to see all those three back on the screen there. Uh, Alyssa, best movie scream. Hmm. If it's just a scream in a movie, I mean, you've got to go with just a classic Wilhelm scream because it's just the most overused scream in the world in any form of media. The Wilhelm scream is the one that everyone knows the most. So got to go with that one there. Uh, which characters do you think you could outrun? Just any characters? I'll smoke them all. Yeah, I'm quick on my feet. I'm a fat boy, but I can run. Ask Steve on the tennis court. I can get, I can get moving. Get moving. Uh, should this movie have been made at all? No. It didn't need to be made. But I'm happy that it did. Because if they leave it now on this movie, I think that's a much better uh, ending to your franchise than what Scream 4 was. But no, this movie did not need to be made, though. Uh, if you had to play Jenga with bananas or cucumbers, which could you tower higher? Probably the banana. I felt the banana's got more strong structural integrity and the bend in it, you know, it sort of adds that that architectural feel where you can really sort of create a new tower in a, in a, in a very long-lasting way that can you know, withstand the test of time. Got to go the banana. Uh, would you rather a phone that only charges to 20% or a TV that only plays low volume? TV that plays low volume. Put the subtitles on, I don't care. I read the subtitles, it does not bother me. A phone to 20%. We know phone batteries these days are fucking bollocks, so what's that going to get me three minutes in a day? I'd rather a fully charged phone. Uh, if you could only do one, wank twice a day or once a month? Twice a day. I don't want to wait a month to have a wank. Uh, twice a day, no, nah, no issues. Might start and get red raw eventually, but hey, I'm sure we'll figure out a way to get around it. Uh, Brooke, does Courtney Cox still got it? Uh, no. In this, she kind of didn't. Uh, you can see the age is catching up to her. And, you know, she is getting older, but, yeah, she's not taking the right routes with uh, plastic surgeries and what not else have you that could make it feel juvenated. Uh, it might just have been this movie and that just didn't really put in the makeup truck that well. But yeah, she's not uh, not crazy in this one. Uh, if they made another Scream, would you be keen? After seeing this, I want to say yes, but I don't want it to happen. As I said before, I don't want it to happen, but if it was anything like this one, sure. Well, I'll take another one. Uh, if you could write a Scream and make your own twist, what would it be? This is one I had to actually fucking think about. And I actually wrote down my answer so I didn't forget it and sit here, you know, rambling on how to get it. Uh, so basically, my Scream movie would be from the killer's eyes. Seeing their motive be set up as to why they are looking to become the ghost face killers and why they target who they do. Uh, the twist, however, would be the reveal of Courtney Cox as a crazed serial killer that recruits new mentally unstable teenagers to enact her devious plans for her. While never originally targeting Sydney... She became priority number one after the first Scream movie. Ooh, crisscross. Don't ask me to elaborate on anything I've just said there. It was just sort of, it just came into my mind. Basically just killer's point of view on why they're doing everything. Because we never see it from the killer's point until the end of the movie and they explain their whole fucking motif and all that. But I want to know it from there. I want to see them doing their setups. I want to see them arguing about what to do. And then that end reveal that Courtney Cox is the head honcho. She's just a crazy serial killer that gets off on seeing these mentally unstable kids enact these terrible crimes and brutally murdering people. Uh, and yeah, she was never going to target Sydney, but after she, you know, managed to kill off her, her group in that first screen movie, she went, fuck you. You're the one I'm going to come screaming for now. But why she doesn't do it straight away? Well, you know, we continuity issues. That's all it is there. Uh, but yeah, that's the question. Thanks you guys for sending those ones in there. It's always a pleasure to read those ones out and answer them for you. Uh, again, you want to send me any over on Instagram links in the day uh, in the bio there. And that is the show for the week guys. Thank you for joining me here on the, you like that podcast uh, episode 102. Uh, if you're new around here again, please subscribe to the YouTube, uh, rate the, rate the audio. If you're listening on Spotify, iTunes, wherever you get your podcasts. I'm sure there's a little rate symbol there. You can really help me out there. Would be amazing. If you want to find me anywhere, the links are in the link tree below in the description. Uh, find me anywhere. Hit me up if you want to talk about movies. Uh, if you want to listen to the extra podcast, there is an extra episode 
every week on this same channel, in this same area that you find this episode. Every week there's an extra episode that you guys get to tell me what to watch, recommend it to me. Hopefully something I haven't seen, but hey, if there's something I haven't done before and you want to hear my actual thoughts on it, then please go check it out. Last week I did The Green Mile. Uh, it was a, a pleasant movie. Go watch that review and you can hear a review from the guy <laughs> from the mouth of someone who hasn't seen the movie in 22 years. Uh, so it was a pleasure there. So help me out everywhere you can. Like, share, subscribe, do all that good stuff there. And then until I see you guys next week, Thank you for listening to the You Like That podcast. My name is Adam, and I'll see you all next week.